Hello and welcome back to Creating Space. I am Martin Bone and this is episode three. Today I'm speaking with two men who are personal friends of mine and also brothers. Lee Owens, the eldest brother of the Owens family, owner and director of Float Planet Liverpool, a wonderful holistic retreat space in the heart of the city centre housing a number of -of state-of-the-art flotation tanks. A father of three and an all-round great individual on a mission of self-mastery and service to others. We've got Tom Owens, who is an independent football coach and an ex-football player who is offering private football training here in Liverpool and beyond. I've got to know Tom over the last couple of years and he is someone I honestly love to share time with. His ambition and drive is immeasurable and he oozes a natural positivity not just for his vocation but for life. The lads have got a lovely story to tell and it felt really honest and relaxed just speaking about life, leadership, coaching, self-care and losing their father. They are very grounded and down-to-earth lads making their way in the world. It lights me up seeing them succeed in their endeavours. I'm sure you'll enjoy this one. Let's get into it. I love doing yoga. I love doing a couple of classes a week. Allow us to journey into these altered states. It really whacked me psyche though, big time. And if you just sit reading books, you know, it's the shadow because you're not going to be in your body. Welcome to Creating Space. Bringing people together. Real conversations with real people. Telling stories and sharing our gifts right here in the heart of Liverpool. Inspiring new ideas, education and co-creation. Choose a challenge that lights you up and is going to make a difference in the world. Creating Space. Sponsored by the Scouse Guru app. Got a great interview today with two brothers here in the studio. Personal friends of mine and great fellas, Lee and Tom Owens. My name is Martin Bowen and welcome to Creating Space. What's happening lads? How are you getting on? Thanks for having us. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. I, uh, I really just want to express my gratitude, actually, for you guys being here. It really does mean a lot. Um, you know, you guys have got a great story to tell, and I've been watching closely the work that you're both doing here in Liverpool and from afar, you know, on, on social media and, and things like that. And I just love seeing people that I love making their way in the world and holding space for service to others. And that's what it's all about, you know, for me. Um, individually and collectively stepping up and sharing your talents with the world for the benefits of others. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm sure the audience is going to enjoy this talk. So, thanks for being here. Welcome to Planet Yoga. Um, I just want to start with you, Lee, straight away. You know, when I sort of want to take this back, I want to take this back in time um, to around around 2000, 2002. I was about 17, you were about 15. And we'd met previously, you know, through um, I know a friend of ours and as a family member of yours, Thomas Field. Um, but it was, it, was, it was around that time when, like, we started to go out a lot more and, you know, getting into Liverpool. And I want to reference the 05 one here, do you know what I mean? Because it, it was a massive step in my life, you know. It was a source of initiation, really, you know, uh, coming out of school, coming out of college and then, you know, going to this club, the 05 one, which was, like, everyone was talking about. And, um, you know, and, 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 yeah, you were there with Thomas and, and we just had this bond straight away, didn't we? And we've known each other since. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking, like... Wow, this is 20, 18, 20 years ago now. So time, let's yeah. go back to that. Um, how was that for you? Like you know, going going to going to do five, getting into getting into the club and seeing at that at that at that age, like um, scary really. Mm. Yeah, when I look back, I was fifteen. Yeah, in, in a nightclub, um, still in school. To mm. be honest, <laughs> <laughs> um, sneaking out, telling me mum I was in. Um, young under 18 <laughs> Riffs <laughs> Staying in Tom's But um, Yeah Dressed in big baggy clothes That didn't fit me <laughs> And a pair of school kicks <laughs> So uh, yeah Do you was... remember it well Like going the old five Yeah I do Yeah It was um, I was small as well Do you know yeah. what I mean So it was It was when you When you're in a nightclub And you It was a little bit Scary yeah, At don't. times Yeah A bit yeah. daunting Yeah, yeah But but obviously, at the same time, you were cool because you were yeah. going out to the, to the nightclub because you were 15. So, yeah. yeah, you felt safe, didn't you? You know what I mean? And you know, you, you're obviously 
of you and yourself, um, yourself and your Thomas, just very well known lads in Liverpool anyway. So there was always a lot of people in and around the club and in and around that sort of way of life that you felt like you were safe. You know what I mean? I, I remember actually the first time going the 05 and I could feel that fear myself. But there was just them butterflies, that excitement that you yeah. were going into something. It was almost like you were getting ready for like a fight or something or an event. It was massive, wasn't yeah. it? And I remember, you know, being outside of the club and, and just feeling this energy that I don't think I've ever felt. Yeah. And, you know, wasn't sure if I was going to get in. And, you know, and then there's the, the bouncers like, you know, yeah, you're in. <laughs> you pay your money and you're throwing the money across the, you know, across the counter. And I remember running down the stairs and, and just for the first time, because it was downstairs, wasn't it? Yeah. You went downstairs and there was like this mist. Once you got on them stairs, it was, oh, it was just that away. was it, you know. You got in. <laughs> the energy was insane, and and again, I um I think it was the first time I'd ever really felt a collective energy in that way. Do you know what I mean? And 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 it was it was all we lived for, wasn't it? You know, for, especially for a couple of years. Yeah. And obviously, the club and scene changed in Liverpool, and you know. Uh, I love for dance music, you know, going to like, you know, the society, um, going to going to the mask, you know, which is now circus, yeah. um, the warehouse project, yeah, the well. warehouse project, all of that kind of stuff, and and then many many great years in yeah. Ibiza. You know, I think you know, I think we went to Ibiza for like ten years on the bounce, didn't we? Do you know what I mean? And, at least, you know, at and, least. and some <laughs> nourishing times there, and I think there was a something collective about being with the boys, yeah. and, you know, having fun, growing up together. Be mischievous, mischievous, you know, chasing girls, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but we all had a, a, a really, um, we had a taste for dance music, didn't we? Mm -hmm. You know, there was that, that sort of beat of the drum, and we were all into like house music, you know, tech house, and and we were seeking out like you know certain nights out, weren't we? Whether it was in Ibiza or whether it was in Manchester or Liverpool, Sankeys as yeah, well. Yeah, man, there was some great nights, wasn't there? Yeah. And um, and and I'm, I hold them close to my heart, you know. I, and I and I'm, I still get my feet on the dance floor, you know, when I can, because mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's medicine for me. Um, and you know, but I know life's changed for, for you a lot, Lee. Over the over the probably the last what five or six years, you've become a father. Yeah. You know, you you've got three kids. Um, you know, and, and obviously you now own your own business, you know, in, in on Dale Street, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's it's been a great ride. That there was a lot of football in there as well, wasn't it? So let's start tapping into that. Like what happened, and um, you know, around the time of growing up in Liverpool, going through your twenties, playing football. Um, you know, yeah, so talk to me. Um, yeah, so I've played football since we were, since we were kids. Always played football. Um, I was convinced I was going to be a footballer mm. um, up until the age of I was 18, 19 when I was released. I played for Wigan after I left school. Um, and yeah, it was up until that point I actually did genuinely think I was going to be a footballer. Mm. And obviously the city as well, being a, a football city. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was a weird, weird time for me really growing up. Leaving school, going into football, doing it for two or three years, and then sort of getting to the end of my contract at Wigan, and then getting told that I wasn't good enough for them at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that sort of took the stuff in army. Yeah, yeah, for like probably about a year or two, and still a bit. I went back playing an amateur with with, with my mates mm -hmm. locally, Lucas Sports. Yeah. Yeah, where we used to meet in the uh, yeah, I remember, yeah, in the Pascal Paylands yeah, afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> how was that though? Sort but, of playing at that level, and then you know, if, uh, there's a feeling of being demoted, isn't it? You know what I mean? I was that on like your confidence levels and things. Yeah, and, it was hard. It was tough. It was e ego, pride. Yeah. Um, just the ar the arrogance that you have when you're younger, mm. even in school. When I look back at school, last couple of years in school, it was just I wasn't interested because mm. I was like, I'm going to be a footballer. Yeah. That's like that's my life. I'm just I'm gonna play football. School doesn't matter. Still had a little bit of that arrogance. Um, it is also, you know, the gang of lads who are young grammar. They're all footballers. They all yeah. played for Everton. Um, couple played for other different clubs, Accrington, and they were all good footballers. So with mm. that, when you're in that crowd as well, that yeah. keeps all level up together. Just reinforces yeah. what what you what you're you doing do. already. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of the stuff around me to be honest. Yeah, it was. It was around the time as well, two thousand and five, when Liverpool won the Champions League, mm -hmm. Istanbul. So it was really, really mixed emotions for me because yeah. it was like, 
had just been through on the, the football skip, if you like. Yeah. And Liverpool had just won the Champions League. Mm. And I even remember, I still remember to this day, my mum getting Thomas and Michael and going, let's, let's, let's go and watch them with the club. Mm. They brought the club back to, to Liverpool yeah. and it's like the whole the city was there. The yeah. parade. I, was, I watched the, the, the actual match and went into town after it and everyone was on the streets. I've never felt yeah. anything like that yeah. in my life. Amazing, money. But when my mum asked me to go to, to watch the parade, there was something in me that was just like, I'm not going. Mm. And it was because of the the heartbreak, really, yeah. of like, even though Liverpool Football Club has nothing to do with my yeah. football, it was just like, I don't know, I was just really confused at the time. Yeah, I felt a connection that was just, just... Yeah, I was still a little bit angry, maybe. Probably a lot jealous, do you know what I mean? Just thinking like, of course, I had this idea of being a footballer mm. and what would happen. And I, I stayed at home and didn't go. Yeah. Yeah, which was, yeah. But you made sure this time when we won it yeah. last year. That you went. I took the, yeah, I took my kids and yeah, I went and I, I enjoyed it. And I remembered, I remembered the time in 2005 when like, you know, where I was yeah. after the the heartbreak of being let go by Wigan. Yeah. To go and enjoy it. And my lad on my shoulders watching them. So yeah, it was, lovely. Yeah. What was the then move then, you know, for you, obviously, you know, you were letting go from Wigan and, you know, you started playing, you know, sort of locally. Um, mm. That was to get me confidence back, really, because yeah. I, I used to go and watch the lads, like Tom would be playing for Lucas Sports, and I'd go and watch them, and I'd be, come on, are you getting your boots on, are you going to play? And I'd be like, nah, I'm just going to watch. Mm. I was watching because I was scared, because I remember mm. thinking, if I play with these now, yeah. and I'm not that good. I don't want to feel what, that rejection. What, 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 what level am I? I was scared yeah. to know where I was. Yeah. Like, I wasn't sure, and then obviously I got back into it, built my confidence up, and then that sort of reignited me. I went, I went and played semi professional football then until last year, yeah, nice, uh, which I, I really enjoyed. So, but I did have that little 18 months, two years low of confidence, and just mm. completely shot of it that I needed to build up. Yeah, uh, but I was watching me and mates play footy and yeah. going, No, no, I don't feel like playing. So, you were semi pro, I think you were playing over in Wales, is that right? Well, that Foxhall Motors at first. Yeah. Mm. So I ended up with Foxhall Motors, which is just over the water. That's like a, a conference, we were in the conference north of the time, mm. a boss team. Um, just loads of, just full of scouts. Yeah, honest. good lads. I will have a laugh. all good footy we'll players, yeah. Bevy, all like going out. Yeah, just playing cards on the, on, on the coach. Yeah. Uh, gambling, losing all your money before you got home <laughs> after, <laughs> after games, but... Yeah, but that was that, yeah, that's like... Boss time of your life, yeah. No, oh, brilliant, yeah. Just, and you're talking about semi-pro, so what were you doing in the meantime for, like, work-wise and things? So, after I got let go from Wigan, I had about a year just in a bit of a rut in the house. Because I had a chip on my shoulder, I had, like, a bit of an arrogance, so it was like, if mum said to me, go, you need to go and get a job, I'd be like, what, what job? Yeah. Because, like, I, I, I had dreams of being a footballer. Mm. I'm not going cleaning toilets mm. or... And I had that little bit of arrogance and cockiness. And so what I, what ended up happening is it got to the point where I was just like, ah, do you need to get something done here? And I just ended up looking at job websites and come across this kitchen, kitchen surveyor, advertised job. I don't even know why I sent my CV in, to be honest. I just sent it in. This guy rang me, uh, interview. It was to train up to be a kitchen designer mm -hmm. for social housing uh, contracts. I think what, what actually got me to send my CV in was because it was a company car. Company phone, company laptop. <laughs> so I, was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking I could do with a bit of these little perks right now, do you know what I mean? I'm not feeling too good. And I went to the interview and the fellow just talked to me straight away. He was just yeah. like, rang me up that rang, rang me up that night, can you start on Monday? Nice. So it was Friday. Um, and that was that then. I sort of went on that journey from when I was like 21 up until last last year, yeah. 18 months ago, yeah. until I stopped doing that. Yeah. Mm. Like I've been... I started off working for a surveying company for a couple of years and then I went self-employed on my own, uh, which was, was was up and down. Yeah. yeah so there was, there was good times and bad times. And then towards the end, I was working for, for a company yeah. before I jumped on Flow Planet. With yeah, the, you, let, with you let go, didn't you? Yeah. And, you know, I remember at the time, you were spinning a lot of plates, weren't you, do you know what I mean? And then just over probably the last 12, 18 months, you know, you start your own business, which, which I'm really excited to be talking about um, in today's conversation. You know, you you just now channeled all your energy into this sort of, you know, you almost put all your eggs in one basket, really. But but this is the basket, isn't it? You know, and and certainly seeing you you grow into the business and what you're already doing in Liverpool, um, with regards to the uh, you know, the the, the, uh, the space that you're holding, 
and the, and the service that you're providing is 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 incredible. Um, and yeah, I really, I, you know, I for one have, have, have dived into the magic that you're offering, and uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing it, um, you know, with uh, with the people who are listening today. So let's uh, let's bring Tom into into the conversation. Tom, how are you getting on? All right, yeah, all good. Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, so you know, uh, th- th- there's a, there's a football sort of nature in the family, here, isn't there? You know what I mean? I know yourself. You you went to America. Um, around what was about two thousand and ten? Yeah. yeah. How old was you then at the time? Uh, Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So you've obviously had a, a a bit of a different ride than haven't you? You know, going over to the states. How did that unfold for you? What What was that all that about? Yeah. Well, very. I'm listening to Lee talk there, and uh, up until eighteen, very similar to Lee really. So, um, went to Preston when I was twelve, and then uh, at sixteen moved there. So left Liverpool, and then, um. So I lived in Preston for two years and then didn't get off with a professional contract. Um, so so a similar story to Lee. I think Lee's story and maybe subconsciously me just watching Lee and, and his coping mechanisms with how he when he got released and it kinda I was lucky in that way. I'd I had, you know, kinda um a strong insight as he was going through that. Yeah. To watch that unfold in yeah. front of me. And even though I was I was young at the time, I was probably learning quite a lot and mm. definitely learning quite a lot so when I got released at 18 mine I didn't take any time off at all or anything and um which which, which I think might have come from me watching Lee mm. get released and then take a few months off and kind of like you know out of crossroads for a while yeah. whereas I was like the opposite so I don't know whether that was um, relevant to Lee's situation, but as soon as I got released, I straight away I was looking for the next yeah, opportunity, like a springboard right for you away. To move. Yeah, and I, obviously I was devastated. Like, so I was, I was similar to Lee. I was quite confident that I was going to get a, a contract, and and I know when when you were when the decision was going to get made on you, you were getting told positive feedback, weren't you, from players and coaches about potentially getting a contract? Yeah, which and I was it was similar to me. It was like you know. You'll be all right, you know, just yeah, keep you're gonna working away, you'll be okay, yeah, stuff like that. So, you so start, sometimes false promises, innit? Yeah, yeah, you start buying into these things and mm. I start being like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'll be all I'm right. I'm in here, yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden you have a meeting and it's like, Tom, you know, there's no contract for you. And it's just like, what? I remember the ring and Lee as soon as I got out of there, right? And it was just like, and I think Lee's word to me on the phone was like, what's next? Mm. Right away. And I don't think Lee had that conversation when, when his situation happened. And yeah. I rung Lee right and I was obviously crying. I was like, listen, i I uh, didn't get me contract and Lee was like, so what's next? Yeah, okay. And so that was massive for yeah, me. Yeah, where's the wisdom? Yeah. Um, I'm sure over the conversation that'll be a a common theme is that kind of following Lee's things, situations and mm. stuff that's happening with Lee, mm. not knowing it, but always watching. Mm. And now I get older and a little bit more wiser, I'm starting to realise that I'm just watching all the time and yeah. and it's helping me Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. Really, um, so at Lee's expense because he's going through all the, he's going through all the stuff first, <laughs> and I'm just watching it all. And then me and I'm like, like, all right, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> or like, all right, yeah, I'll do that. Actually, that looks like that's worked out for Lee, so I'll do that one. <laughs> so at Lee's expense, but like, and um, you went to America then, didn't you? So yeah, so then so straight away got off of the uh, a scholarship in America, um, and then probably it all happened quite quick. I think I was spoke to my mum and Liam. I was like, you know, this opportunity is is there, and then I think in two weeks' time. It was just, yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah. And two weeks later, I was on a plane. Yeah, wow. Going to start a journey in, in America, and it was fast. Yeah. Um, don't really remember dwelling on it for a while. Just went with it. Yeah, just quick. and it did happen fast. It was super quick, wasn't it? And yeah. even now, I'm just like, I don't know. Now, probably because of how analytical I am now, I'm almost like as if you know too much when you get older, but mm. you, you look at, you, you, you kind of like, when you're making decisions, things go through well too many filtering systems. Whereas back then, I didn't even have any filtering systems. Yeah. I was like, I want to go. That's it. And I'm going. Yeah. And that was it. No fear, sort no, of like no, 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 no managing risk. No. Just went right. I don't know yeah. what I'm in. You know, there's, there's. I think being young at that time and 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 having a thirst for the for the game and just you know you know using Lee's story as an example and, and to go you know okay what's next. Mm. I'm in jumping on planes and, and going over to the side of the world. I know you went to the USA, mm. um. So you know how did that unfold? Yeah, so um, I got there. I ended up doing a, a, a four year scholarship, and and it was good. It was a lot different. Obviously, my intentions going over there was to be a professional footballer still. So I thought I was gonna go over there, and I thought in my mind the level's not gonna be as good. So I'll definitely be a professional football player over here. And then two years into me studying, 
started to realise that I wasn't doing very well with my studies and I was close to dropping out of school um, to the point where I had to get one of the assistant coaches had to come and knock on my dorm room every day to take me to the library to make sure that my studies were yeah, going up. Cracking on. So we had to watch me do my homework because, if I'm being honest, I was just, I was from 18 to 20, I was playing FIFA. Yeah. I was drinking, partying, playing <laughs> footy. <laughs> I was with 10 English lads. I mean, it was like the dream. It was yeah. like it was like going to Malia, but for four years, you yeah. know what I mean? It was like intense lads holiday. Yeah. And, and then two years in, though, when I was going to fail out, and how it works in America, that if you fail out of your school or if, you, if your studies drop below a certain level, you can't step on the football pitch. So quite a good system, really, that helped me a lot yeah. because I realised that level up. I'm going to have to level up here education-wise yeah. um, if I want to continue playing football. So... So that system helped me. So then two years in was when kind of probably a light bulb switch where I was like, okay, I might not be a footy player here. It was probably the first time I'd considered not yeah. being a professional footy player. And I was like, I might not be a footy player here and I might have to start looking into other things. And mm-hmm. and I always remember me coaches at the time in America um, and I've thanked them as of late, but at the time I always remember them trying to encourage me to have other hobbies. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, now I look back, I think it was their way of being like, listen, like, you know, you are where you are. Yeah. They just didn't want to tell me the cold truth of, like, yeah. you're in America, you're, Eng- you're English, lads, there's a yeah. reason why you're here. You know, you're not unbelievable as football or as good as you probably think you are. Yeah. And, you know, encouraging me to take up other hobbies yeah. and have other interests, whereas for a long time I was just like, nah, I'm not interested in anything else. I want to be a footy player. Yeah. Um, but then the penny dropped two years in and I was like, I'm going to have to take studying a bit serious here and, and start looking at other avenues in case football doesn't yeah. work out. Because there's a fine line here between like belief and just going after your beliefs and the things that you love to do, you know, and then and then look, being real as well, you know what I mean? You know, sometimes the truth is like you're actually, you're good, but you're not good enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I suppose that happens for a lot of footballers now. Like they believe they're better than maybe they are. And there's, you know, we have to chase our dreams and we have to go after our belief systems and, and, it, and it, it helps us to be the best version of ourselves or to be the best football player that we can possibly be. So there's a fine line, isn't there, between mm. like continuing to believe and going all the way. But there's also elements of maybe denial in that and, and you know, of understanding that actually I'm not as good as maybe I think I am what other options have I got in the world? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, so you stayed in America. I know you were there for what, seven or eight years? Seven years done, yeah. Yeah. So 2010 I went, 2014 I graduated uh, with my undergraduate degree in business management and then I stayed on an extra visa for a year, 12 month visa, uh, worked in Cleveland, Ohio, coach for the team that I'd graduated from where I'd done my studies and then my visa ran out so then I was looking at options to stay in America um, so then I ended up going to pursue a master's degree because it was going to give me another two year visa Yeah. so then I went to Illinois so I moved just to a place didn't know anyone um, didn't have any contacts there. Um, just a whole new, yeah, uh, fresh start, yeah. meeting new people, yeah. going into the unknown. Yeah, and I, I think like back back then. Now now I look at it now. I used to just do things whatever I, I wanted to do, and I'd, I'd just go somewhere where you know didn't know anyone. And, yeah. Um. But looking back at the, the the network and the people that I've connected with from going on and taking up on these opportunities, yeah. like a lot of people when they're in America, they come home every summer. Yeah. They come home to just be with the family yeah, and work with us. I never came home. Mm. And it was, wasn't because I didn't miss my family. It was just like, I was just out there hungry. with my eyes yeah, open. Saying yes to the world. There, yeah, I was going in different environments, playing for different teams, meeting different people. Whereas now, me running the business and um, like just like the contacts that I've got now in, across the world because yeah. I, I made that decision in them seven years was is starting to pay dividends really now. Yeah, it's when you look um, back in it, you know what I mean? You know, you're in this position, you know, you bring it to the present moment and then you look back and you connect the dots and you think, wow. I made them decisions, but them decisions are really saving me now in the world because, you know, again, you're talking about connections and, you know, and relationships, you know, all around the globe, mm. which is obviously saving you where you're up to today. Mm. Um, so let's sort of bring this into the, you know, towards the present moment. I know you come back from um, America uh, having, you know, completed the Masters in uh, July 2017, is That's that right? One, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you've only been back, what, two and a half years. Mm. Um, tell me the first initial sort of integration period when you come back, because um, I know it wasn't so great for you at the start, but, but, but I'm really looking forward to, sh- you know, listening to where, you've, where you are now today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so July 12, 2017, I got back, um, and then I thought, because I had a master's degree and, 
because I'd been the captain of every football team that I played on and I had a lot of success on the pitch. Um, that I was going to come back and just walk into a top job and, and, and all that other stuff. Um, and that wasn't the case. And it ended up turning out from July to around December time. I was doing um, I was doing afternoon coaching at a primary school. Um, so I was basically like a PE teacher, a covering PE teacher. Um, I was doing night shifts at a factory called Pronovus Actrion in Speak. So I was doing a 7pm to 7am night shift three mm-hmm. times a week. And I was playing semi-pro football as well. So, so yeah, I mean, that, that was a tough transition for me because I was just like, you know, I'm better than this. I can provide more value than this. Or yeah. at least I thought I did. Yeah. Um, and so I had this like perception that I was a lot, I could provide a lot more value to the world than what I was doing. And so that was very humbling for me to be in, 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 in uh, bouncing between those jobs. And, um, and then there was a period there where I thought, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, this isn't what I've come home for. Yeah. Um, it was great to see the family and everything, but I weren't progressing in myself and, um, like I had been while I was in America. And I took it, I started looking into a job in America. So, before I left America, I got off the a coaching job and I turned it down to come back home. When I was here for three or four months and things weren't going the way I wanted them to go, I decided to get back in touch with that employer and I was like, listen, you know, things aren't really as sm- smooth as I want them to be in Liverpool. I'm looking at coming back to America. I remember seeing you in the gym. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember that conversation. I do remember the conversation. And, and yeah. that was a big moment for me, that. And, it was just passing, wasn't it? We mm-hmm. were just getting changed, I think, in in the David Lloyd year in Liverpool. And um, I remember the comment you made actually. Mm, Did you want you know spit it out? Uh, yeah, let's, it let's, let's share with everyone. Um, it, so, but, but I'll just share very quickly. Yeah. You know, Tom came over to me, and um, and you know, I think <laughs> it, was, it was a passing moment, and he said it's shit here, isn't it? And and for me, life isn't shit. You know what I mean? Life mm. is awesome, and, and I've really designed an incredible life. You know, around the things that I value. I feel like I've got incredible purpose and meaning here in Liverpool. I know my roots. I know the things that light me up. And and so, I, you know, and it's such a mantra, isn't it? People just go, well, shit in here. Massive and they, 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 they're just saying stuff. They don't even know why it's shit. They're just spitting it out. And and I'm in a place of confidence in my life. And I, and, and actually, I love you as a, as a person, you know, and as a brother, you know, and I've shared some really nice moments with you. And I just called you out, didn't I? I said, well, what's shit about it? Mm, big time, yeah. And you didn't have the answer, did you? Oh, I hated it. It was horrible. <laughs> Even now, it still don't, it doesn't make me feel good, but the way you responded, I but I needed it. I telling me, yeah, I was just so bony. It's just in the pool, he's just absolutely sorted me. Mm, it, it really whacked me, psyche, though, <coughs> big time. Like, like I, if I ever needed that, and it wasn't a long part, you didn't, you didn't give me a lecture. Yeah. It was literally a sentence or two, mm. but it, it, it shook me up big time, that. Nice. And it made me think how... How I was on autopilot yeah. made me think how I was regurgitating other people's programs mm. and how other people see the world. And I was just because if I would have said that to anyone else but you, you would have agreed with me. Yeah. And the conversation would have went how it I wanted to go. Reaffirms, yeah. You know that the, the, the mantra does yeah. it. Yeah. And I'd probably be in America now, really, yeah. being honest, because wow. that's where I was going. Mm. That's where I was. I was in heavy conversations of listen, I need to get out of here. Mm. Um, and when I was telling other people, they were like, "What are you up to, Tom?" And I'm like, "I'm telling them what I'm doing." And they're kind of like, oh, really, yeah. I'm like, yeah, but I'm leaving. Them. They're like, yeah, get back over there. It's not an over here for you. Mm. That's what everyone, everyone that I spoke to, everyone said, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Besides from the people really, really close to me. Yeah, including your brother. Yeah, yeah. And everyone I spoke to, there's not an here for you. Everyone, not an here for you. Mm. It's better over there. There's not an here, that's shite. Crap. Mm. Not an here. And then when I spoke to you, you were like, there's loads here. Mm. This is the boss place to be. It's one of the best places to be. Mm. And it's as good as you want to make it be. And... Because I remember I was t- telling you that I'm thinking about going back to America and you were like, why? Mm-hmm. And that's when I said, shit here, innit? Mm-hmm. And you went, no. <laughs> no, it's not. And I was like, isn't it? And that was the first time I was like, wow. And um, that was big for me that year. Mm, lovely. And th- so then from there, that that made me start to make me question stuff. And then um, I done, when, when I was doing it in America, I was doing me coaching. So I done, because um, I was coaching in a, a university team, I was doing some one-on-one sessions with the lads to try and improve them and get them better and Lee kept telling me try it here um, probably for a while weren't you and I was just like I won't work here but knowing the gifts you've got as a, t- as a teacher as a mentor as a coach I'm not sure what what is it why he was telling me to do yeah. that but I think I, I think I think I knew how good he was before he did mm. 
you know, when you're just, I just, you just know. don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and think, I, I, I knew where he was going with, with his business, but yeah. I knew he could make, I, I knew he could make a good living. Yeah. I did never, ever dream it would go to how far he's gone now yeah. with having coaches. And I think as well, though, like Lee, you were probably projecting your own ideas. That, you know, I know, you know, over the last couple of years, the last few years especially, there's, there was a lot of change happening for you about, you know, mindset, attitude, personal developments, you know, life is what you make it, Definitely. you know, and, and really taking control yeah. um, and making some big moves. And so you were certainly, you know, not probably from an impersonal place, you're projecting your own stuff onto him. Mm. But from a personal standpoint, he was your brother. You probably like wanted them to be back, stay in Liverpool and of maybe course, a little bit yeah. longer. That you know, like, that was the family the dynamic. And, big, big reason. I, yeah. Even when he was over there, we used to speak a lot on Skype. It was Skype back then. There was no FaceTime. And um, I used to always want to say to him, come on. Mm. But then I'd speak to my uncles or other people and they'd be like, oh, Thomas in America? Yeah, he wants to stay over yeah, there. Yeah, leave him be. Leave him over there. He wants to stay over there. There's nothing happening here. And when people are saying it, and it makes you feel even more selfish to say, come on. Yeah. Because I don't, I didn't know what I wanted him to come on for. Yeah. It was just because he was my brother. Of and course. I was just like, yeah. oh, I think you should come on. Mm. But I you offered him a container, didn't you? Of, of like, you know what? I, you've probably seen his potential. Well, that was know. my window, really. Yeah. To, to act on my selfishness. Yeah. In, in a way, but in a good way. Yeah, Because I knew... I wasn't just putting him down at that end thinking, oh, I want you to stay home and go yeah. and be a footy coach, by yeah. the way. You'll hit a couple hundred quid a week. It was like, I had genuinely, like, since I've seen him coaching, it was you just like, he's just was. got something. Yeah. He just, I knew how loud he was anyway. I grew up yeah. with him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's, the, he's loud. Do you know what I mean? So you get, he gets your attention. So yeah. I was just like, fuck yeah. in the house. <laughs> but that's what it's about, isn't it? Inevitably, it's yeah. about capturing someone's attention. Mm. You know, it's about anchoring someone in the moment, inspiring someone, educating mm. someone, you know, and really like holding the space for, for someone to be like, wow, you are demonstrating incredible qualities, like mm. how to build character, how to be, a, you know, um, how to be a pioneer, how leadership qualities. And, and so you notice that growing up, you know, being, you know, the elder in the house, the oldest brother. And, um, and, and then since then, obviously, you know, Tom Owens UK and, and, and the business it is today. So, what is unfolding with regards to the business and how does that look? Yeah, I think even just to, to add to that, to, to the last um, topic there, it was like, I use I use that concept now. So it, it was quite clear a couple of years ago that Ali believed in me well more than I believed in me. Mm. Um, so now I use that concept now with our players when we're working with them. It's like, like listen, you don't need to trust yourself right now. Mm. Like just trust me. Yeah. I, I believe in you. Yeah, lovely. Don't don't you don't need your trust right mm. now. Um, I believe you can do it. I believe we can get there. Mm. Right now, let's just go with my belief, mm. and eventually your belief will filter in eventually down yeah. the road once you start doing it and building Powerful. repetition and stuff like that. So, and so me having first hand experience that concept because Lee believed in my abilities and pushed me so much. To like, listen, just do it. Just what's the worst that can happen? Just try it. Just, yeah. um, and then fast forward now. It's still obviously nowhere where 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 I'd like it to be. There's there's, there's always levels, but um, started in a church with the uh, with Lee's friends, uh, son, uh, Leighton, and um, I don't know. It was in like a ten by ten at the back of a church. Let like me first few sessions there, um, and probably making like a five and an hour on the sessions, I think, but it was just a case of getting content for social media and letting, yeah. letting people know that I offer that service. And then now uh, there's 15 coaches. Um, we've got Prescott, uh, half a Prescott Soccer Centre every day. Um, we've got partnerships with different companies. Um, we've got a couple of full-time staff. Uh, and it's exciting. Mm-hmm. And how many kids are you seeing a day? Like, like... There's probably about six, 700 kids a month now that we see. Wow. Yeah, on a monthly basis. Um, and they come in all different forms, one-on-one, small group training, team sessions. Um, <laughs> and then... We've uh, we've been to Ireland for a few coach education seminars, uh, and and yeah, just loads of really exciting projects and stuff, and um, and then I also get to get to bring um, one of one of my full time members of staff is my best mate, so it's just gave me so many opportunities mm-hmm. to to try and create the life really that I want. Do you want a funny story as well? <clears throat> when we were sort of just talking about private coaching in England and. Because when he was in America, he had like, he had like 60 clients, was it? 
Yeah, 60. there's just like a lot of the team, yeah. I think it's like 60 it. clients doing one-on-ones. And in England, in Liverpool especially, there was nothing, there was no one really doing it. There might have been a few people, but it was not, mm. wasn't as big as it is now. And I come across a lad who went on LinkedIn and he took a picture of his lad getting trained on a field somewhere, private coaching. Yeah. It was just the, just the coaching. This lad getting trained and I sent it to, I sent it to Thomas. I said, look, there's, there's, the, there's, the, there's a market for it. There's yeah. people doing it. And fast forward... Oh, I don't know how many months it took. That that lad's now actually training with Tom. With Tom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, just like yeah. the same lad. Nathan, just like... Nathan DeForo. Yeah. Wow. In case he's listening, yeah. Yeah, and and I think you know just sort of using that platform of social media. You know, talking about your Instagram account, you're up there at like nearly nine thousand followers, and I, I, you know, you, it's probably only being active for what twelve months, eighteen months. Yeah. You know, and, so there's a massive amount of people now following Tom Owens UK. You know, and there's a diversity of of coaching methods that you're offering. You know, so I know I know it's you know not just boys, it's it's women as well, isn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? There's yeah. girls, and you know, it's one to one sessions, group sessions, and you're actually now working with high profile players, aren't you? So you know, give, give us an idea of who you actually yeah, working with at um, the moment. So Aaron Creswell, West Ham, is with us. Uh, Tony Duggan, uh, England Athletic Madrid. Name dropping here, like, but that, yeah, way, but that please, way you want me to yeah, go yeah, with the drop name them, drop, man. Yeah. Uh, Lee Peltier, Victor Anachibi. Um, we had Molly Green, Ella Toon from Manchester United, um, Anthony Gordon, Everton. Um, don't want to miss anyone out here. Wow. Um, I mean, there's some got big, Tony massive Eves, names, John aren't they? Taylor, yeah. The United Girls. Yeah, Molly Green, Ella Toon. And what are they buying into? What, what, what's your ethos here? Why, why Tom Owens UK? What are you doing differently? Um, or what are you offering? It's a good question, yeah. I, I think... I think through through my experience of of playing and all the coaches that I remember, um, and I've had them, I've had millions of coaches from playing football for so long, and the coaches that I remember are the ones that really cared like so much mm. for, for me and my development. Um, and not so much like tactically they were unbelievable and mm. they improved me loads technically, but just the 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 ones I remember and the ones that stick out that I think really made a massive influence on my life are the ones that cared about me the most and. So I think when I started the business and offering the service, it was I had a keen interest to really help, and I feel quite strong and uh, strongly. And like I needed me yeah. when I when when it wasn't available to yeah. me really. Um. So now when we're seeing six year olds or um or fourteen year olds or, or anyone really who have eighteen year olds who are, who are getting close to professional contracts at clubs, like I needed what I'm telling them. Yeah. Back then, so yeah. Um. So that that drives me really, and so I think what 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 the difference is, I think the the amount of care and, and detail and the the level of intensity of of the training, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's it's just consumed me whole life really mm-hmm. trying to figure out how I can help it, these people improve, and um, and I think going on my own personal development journey and constantly collecting data from people like yourself and. Um and courses that I'm going on and books that I'm reading, I'm getting better. So I think as I've got better, the service has got better. Lovely. And uh, the people that who, who are working in the business and improving, um, and it's all been in correlation with my personal development. Mm-hmm. The better I get, the better everything else seems. And to this be has been in a short space of time, really, hasn't it? You yeah. know what? The last eighteen months. Yeah, when when you second was when was the Cardone? Grand Cardone needs a shout out to you. Yeah, it? Get it, shout him out. <laughs> when was the Cardone? No, it's a funny one. Because you, you got the thing, book. Thing on, isn't it? When did you get the book? Again, it's Ali free. went first. Yeah, me and our Michael led Ali. <laughs> well, you introduced me to him through Sam Vale. Yeah, and through a video on YouTube, and I watched it with Lauren. Yeah, and it was just some crazy American. You know, like the way that but he's got really energy, hasn't he? He's got so high energy, but it was, was off putting to be honest, because yeah. I. Because we're not really like that as yeah. in England and Liverpool, are we? So we're a bit more introverted. So I couldn't really take to my face. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna his book, his picture of the book was him sitting on a private jet. Yeah, on the, on the, yeah. ten X's is that one? Is it? Yeah, or... be obsessed. To be oh, that's right. Yeah. So I just thought, you know what? I was into, I was in, I was into my book before. Audio that. books, yeah, wasn't I was doing it? Yeah. A lot of audio books. So I thought, you know what? It's just another book that I can listen to. So I got it, and um. You find out a lot about the person, don't you? Yeah, it's not just absolutely. what they're selling and all about what they're, yeah. you're learning about how the the life and that and that could relate to a lot of the things and a few similar things that like he lost his dad when he yeah. was young stuff like that. I mean, you hear stuff like that, you think, oh, I can, 
relate to that like mm, that of course do you know what I mean so you take yeah. a little bit to it so but I don't I think that was about was at least three years ago three and a half years ago wasn't mm. it yeah and because then it was him and then I remember Simon Sinek Sorry, yeah, sorry. another big, you know, powerful teacher, yeah. you know, making some moves, you know, yeah. throughout the, come across the internet. Vi- yeah, come across his video and then... It was a famous bit millennial video, wasn't it? Mm. It was it TEDx now? Or, or Tom Bilyeu? Tom Bilyeu, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, Tom Bilyeu, massive. Yeah, brilliant. I think, I think, like, for me, it's like, when I come across Cardone, I don't know why. I still can't explain it now, but I, like, I went, like, full heavy metal yeah personal <laughs> development yeah like I'm i free. just like yeah it wasn't even like a slow as soon as i'd listened to the first video every morning i was watching his videos while i was eating my brekkie i was listening to it in the gym mm. i was going to sleep listening like i don't know why yeah just something must have just triggered me inside yeah. and i was just like i think maybe maybe with him losing his dad at the same age i did and then yeah. seeing what he's achieved in life made me think i can't i can't use that as an excuse as why I haven't got what I've got. Yeah. He's used it as a way to as a prepare them. Board, yeah. 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 And so I was like, if he's been through what I've been through and achieved what he's achieved, then the sky's the limit for me. Yeah. So I think, I don't know why, but I just went. He lit you up, didn't he? And, and obviously, yeah. as a byproduct of that, is where you are today sitting here with, with trombones and the organism of, of and the dynamic of the business which is which is growing exponentially and, and, and expanding in every direction you know and, and like this is as you said this is just the beginning isn't it you know what I mean you know things are unfolding for you and who knows where you're going to end up with it and you know I wish you all the best and it's a great story that you're telling um you know, and I think uh, what you're talking about here, Tom, is is, is the stuff that you, you, you're you feeding yourself, you know, and what are you feeding your psyche nowadays? You know, people are still, what, maybe reading the paper, propaganda, listening to the radio, but listening to Radio City, you know what I mean? And no disrespect to Radio City, by the way. Um, You know, but it, it, it's, you know, watch, watching the news and it's like still, it's like our spiritual diet, I call it, you know what I mean? And so for you to use the internet for you to use that social media as a, as a springboard to be inspired, you know what I mean? To help you step up on an only talking about audio books there. And you, and you I know for the time you were chewing a lot of audio books up, weren't you? And, um, you know, uh, Napoleon Hill, you know, uh, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And it's yes. just th- this level of just being inspired on a daily basis, these small wins, these small pockets of insights have a massive uh, impact on our, on our, on our being, you know, and, and how we level up and how we actually step up and grow up into maturity. Um, and very quickly, I want to touch on, you know, you being that coach, you're offering a service now of 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 maybe what you felt like wasn't offered at the time. You know, actually sometimes just putting your hand on, on a kid's shoulder and saying, I've got you. That level of presence and that attention to detail is powerful, you know, and, and I think that's what we're missing in the West a lot of the time. Now it's just sort of being seen by elders, mm. you know what I mean, and being being heard and being it, being supported. It was a very 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 recent story. Um, I done a session a few weeks ago, probably a couple of weeks ago, and it was a Friday in Uncross of the Simpsons, and it was a group from Ireland come over for the session. So we delivered the session, and the goalie come out early. Must have just been there early, so his gloves on now. So I'm like, you goalie? And he was like, yeah, I'm a goalkeeper. I was like, he's right, so I'll try and save this then. So it's a few foot he's out of me, he's catching it. And oh, sorry, before that, I skipped a bit there, the, the important bit. Before that, I said, you're a good goalie? He went, not really, no. And I went, all right, let's have a look then, get in goal. And so it's a few foot, and he was catching the footy, so I was whacking it out of my half mm-hmm. it. He was catching all that, and I was going, you're all right, you're in goal, you are good. And then I started hitting a few shots, and he made a few saves, and then throughout the session, when he'd make a good save, I'd really highlight it. Mm. Um, just because of his attitude when mm. he come in, it was very like... Mm. Nah, Deflating. I'm, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm okay, goalie. You can tell people have been telling him he's yeah. not that great. And then I, I just was just highlighting his stuff in, in uh, throughout the session. Not not necessarily consciously. Yeah. Just doing it, just to yeah. do it and trying to you know promote well, his you're confidence. You're seeing the facts, aren't you? You know what I mean? And, and, and giving him praise where praise mm. is due. Yeah, and then literally two weeks later, um, like the last couple of days... We got a message on Instagram and uh, the lad must have found us on Instagram, followed us and sent me a big long message saying, I had Tom, it's Mustafa from um, the goalkeeper from the Irish team. Um, 
just want to let you know, like, you know, uh, my performances have been unbelievable lately, ever since you told me that you thought you, I was a good goalie and, you know, no one's ever really said I was a good goalie wow. or thought I was good. And, and, it, and this is just me and, like, passing conversation. Yeah. I didn't really mean to touch the, the, the player's heart as yeah. much as it did, but, but I just naturally, yeah. you never really know who you're speaking to and Absolutely. you never know what they need to hear. And so that really made me, when I told our coaches, I was like, I made a point of, of our coaches to say, listen, you don't know who's standing in front of you. Yeah. You don't know what they need to hear. And mm. it might it might just be normal talk that yeah. we talk every day because we're used to it. But there's people out there who don't hear that information yeah. until a long time. So yeah. that's a powerful it made story. me realise that, yeah. No, we do the, the power of being yourself and, and the, the, that level of, of enthusiasm, you know what I mean, and presence can can almost save someone's life. Never mind never mind save someone's career. Do you know what I mean? And as you said, you know, even if you take this off the football pitch, you take this out of the coaching dynamic and when you're just being a person, you know what I mean? Because it's all about people, isn't it? It's all about just coming together, being yourself and, and yeah, and just just exploring your gifts and talents and, and all of a sudden you're lighting people up just from that level of, yeah, of your own um, of your own personal growth, you know, with the stuff you've been tapping into. Um, I just want to tap, tap into something quickly here and... and um, and I hope you don't mind me talking about it. You know, you're talking about like you lost your you lost your father, didn't you? And um, you know, and he was he was actually on the football pitch, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, from from what I, I understand. Um, so let's just tap into that for a moment. You know, like uh, the, you know what unfolded. How old were you? And and what what unfolded at, at that time? I was I was thirteen. I think two thousand and one. Yeah, I think I was thirteen before I was fourteen. So you'd have been what nine? Nine going on to ten, yeah. Nine going on to ten, yeah. Two thousand and one, yeah. So it was, yeah. It was, it was just a shock. It was just an absolute shock to the system. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was just out of nowhere as well. So, um, it was on the football pitch that correct? He used to play five aside football every Friday night, yeah, eight mm. till nine. Um, and it was just a sudden heart attack. Um, I can't. I don't know the exact. What the exact term was, there was like mm. a term for it, but it was something to do with a valve being thinner than it should have been. Mm. And it just it was something that couldn't have been detected anyway, apparently. So yeah, I was just playing football and it was just yeah, a bolt I'll do. I was actually I was actually just round the corner from when it happened, just mm. playing with my mates. Um and my mum drove past and just like you said, your dad's had a had an accident. It's just by chance just seeing me on the road and like I just went round. Just thought he broke his leg or something. Mm -hmm. Really, um, that's what you think. You don't think yeah, he's dropped, don't think he's, 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 he's dropped dead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or a heart attack, or and then yeah, and then we, we got rushed to the hospital and didn't pull through. And then yeah, that was that was a, a massive shock to the system. And mm. yeah, still, 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 it's still hard to talk about it now. Do you know what I mean? We don't really. It, it don't. It does, it does get mentioned from time to time, but to go in depth about it, it's like it's still. Um, we didn't. Well, I didn't. Um, go through the proper, like the, the grieving side of it, and the yeah. the, the, the counselling of your life, the psycho like the, yeah. the the psychology to it and stuff like that. So being thirteen, it's like it's, it's tough. It, yeah. It's I think you know you, we are sort of moving into we we're, we're moving into our teens, aren't we? We're moving into you know out of like boy psychology towards being a man, but to lose your own father, you know that elder who's obviously there. Um, to hold the space and to guide you into manhood, that was well, that, that that cord was cut, um, and so you know I'm I'm guessing it was a very confusing time. You were probably very angry, um, and maybe a lot of suppressed anger in there, like so. And also there was a lot of responsibility. You being the eldest, you know, brother in the house, mm -hmm. there's a level of how you had to step up into that role. Okay. How was that for you, like you know, moving in towards your you know your your later teens and your, and your early twenties. You know what? I'd, it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the anger that was harnessed in it, um, and the the obviously the common the common thing people say to you is that you know you're the man of the house. Mm -hmm. You know you the. But I was like, I was so far from being a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was just literally out of being a toddler yeah. at thirteen. I yeah. was still a little idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is that 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 sort of yeah, it was accelerated things quick, didn't it? For you. Yeah, it did. It was it's like it's only in my recent like since I've had kids and maybe just before that that really I've started to be a man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Which is like 
10, nearly 12 years later yeah. than when I was asked to be one. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, so that was a funny, funny time of, it was not, not knowing how to navigate it and not knowing what to do with the anger. Yeah. And it would come out in different ways and, um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was tough, yeah. It was, I don't know, how, how, how did you, do you remember the time like that? Um, you were young, weren't you? I remember being told. Mm. You told me, mm. and my mum, me, me and I Michael at the same time, but I don't know how, how, I can't remember my reaction. I don't think it was a emotional one mm. of crying. I don't think you believed me when we were told you. It was just like all a bit like... Yeah, it was just a bit fast and sudden. I was like, really? Yeah. It was like, all right, uh, now what? Like, what, yeah. I don't know what, that, what does that mean? And mm -hmm. just like, no, I wasn't old yeah. enough to consciously like of process it all. How's think. it been like maybe growing into, you know, becoming a man? Like, do you think about them a lot? Like, does it yeah, come up so, in... Yeah, I, I mean, I tried, especially when we introduced the card on and started talking about it. Um... I do, I do think about it a lot. I think about it in a way of, and obviously I've got a tattoo on my wrist, so yeah. I always try and, um, you know, times of of, of difficulty or resistance, yeah. I always try Just and feel into that spirit. Try and go to it, and um, uh, and even to be honest, the Kobe Bryant thing as of late, yeah. was strange, and that that shook me up as well, and that mm -hmm. got me thinking about my dad again. Yeah. Because um, he had kids, didn't he? You know what I mean? And I was 13 year old. You yeah. know, she, she was in the helicopter with him. Like, yeah, so I was thinking about all that stuff. and um, So, yeah, no, but, but probably in the same boat as Lee in terms of probably, I don't know whether there's a right way to deal with someone passing away mm. that closely or if there's a, a counselling that people are supposed to go through. But mm. if there is, we didn't. He didn't get we it. We didn't get it. Mm. No, and I'm probably, even being honest, it's probably a big reason why we come and seek people like yourself mm -hmm. to check into them feelings and um because you know i know that the work i do with you mm -hmm. you make us look at stuff like yeah, that getting into the body a little yeah. bit more whereas it? i wouldn't i wouldn't sit in ours and, yeah. and make a conscious choice to look at it mm -hmm. i'd rather just stay busy mm -hmm. and not think about it yeah even being honest so i think coming to you and exploring the float tank and meditation allows me to look at my life yeah. and reflect on some experiences and Lovely. try and yeah but I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I do an unbelievable job of it I don't yeah. think I'm, I'm anywhere near where I'd like to be um, mentally um, but but yeah it's a process in it like anything Absolutely. else you know and, and talking about meditation here and flotation therapy which I'm really excited to, to, to dive into is is just that having this like essence of a of a of a stronger sense of awareness to be able to contemplate to be able to review you know maybe our past or the way we behave as as humans and the way we react out in the world you know certain paradigms and um and sometimes you know i like to call them you know sleepwalk and you just sort of in the world you know navigating life from from a set of memorized behaviors and not really having that sense of awareness and that sense of presence to you know to be here and to navigate the world, um, and and obviously you know you guys diving into like every all matters related to the human experience, especially over the last few years, you know with all the audio books, with all the meditation that you've been doing, and I know you come here to do yoga, the Planet Yoga, um, and 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 you know the seminars and the workshops you've been to, and having just each other. You know, there's a strong bond between you know the two years, and let's not forget, you know, your youngest brother Michael, and um, the, the the family dynamic tight. You know what I mean, and 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 that, that uh, that's just it's great to see, it's great to watch. You know what I mean, you know how you've obviously stuck together, and and I'm sure your dad would be really proud of, of the men you've become today. You know, and where you're up to, and let's bring this into you know we're talking about a level of maybe understanding or going back and taking a understanding what happened. I know you had a massive experience Lee didn't you in a flotation mm -hmm. tank um you know with the ma and it's and it took you back in time didn't it so and know. it was probably a, a a moment where you started to realize the power in the tank yeah. and in that experience so just sort of move into that for a moment and then yeah. we'll we'll talk about flow planets and, and and where you are and what's what's going on for you today about the experience that yeah. I yeah yeah it just took me back to the to the to the day, um, I dad, I think I've done a class in the morning, yeah, with with, uh, with Chris, yeah, Sapien, right, and it was a hip opener, 
Mm. Uh, I'd booked the float just by chance uh, in Manchester. And this was before you opened your own business? Was before, it? it was in the pipeline. It was, um, I hadn't floated before. Obviously, I'd, I'd, I'd agreed that we were going to do that with the, the, the centre with Michael. So this... I booked the float just by chance because I was working in Manchester that afternoon afterwards, so I had, I had a job to do. There. What's this float all about? Yeah, but this is this is probably this wasn't my first float. Yeah, this was probably a few floats after, but I had the float and it was. It just so I had an experience. I was it was it was actually a mantra that you you give me. Mm. I'm not sure where you give me it. I think it was, it was a meditation. meditation. It yeah. was who am I? Yeah, and it was who am I mantra, and I was having a float and I could feel my mind was a little bit busy because that's what happens. First 10, 15 minutes, you go into a float, you, you, you can be a little bit. You take everything, you take yeah. the outside world in there, the analytical you? mind's, the still, analytical firing, mind's still firing, yeah, that's the right way to put it. And um, so it was fine, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a long float, this. And I was just like, <laughs> I was sitting there, and I thought, and I don't know why, it just come to me, who am I? And I started saying it, and I was half conscious, thinking, they're going to be able to hear me outside shouting this. <laughs> and I was like, going, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And I'm it just took me straight. It was as if I went back to being born. Yeah, wow. As like I can remember, being, like being born, and then it was like it took me to like we've got like a video of me playing football in the back garden, and I'm saying play football with me dad, and I'm rolling on a football, and I could just see it crystal clear, and it's my dad videoing me in the back garden. I was wow. like, play football with me dad, play football. And I'm just rolling on this big basketball, and um, and then the next minute it just took me to the, to the night he died. I can't, it, it, I, there was something else that happened in between, but I can't remember what it was. And it just took me to the night he died, and it was just crystal clear. Mm-hmm. Everything from playing on the street with my two mates to my mum pulling up in, in, in a silver car with, with one of the lads who were playing football, jumping in the back. I could see my mum sitting next to me, mm-hmm. her face was, she just looked terrible. And mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, how bad can this Going be? On here. He's just broke his leg or something, he's playing football, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? How bad can this injury be? To pull them up at the the, the Halewood Sports Centre, which is actually gone now. It's actually in the new leisure centre. Um, so I ran out the car, over to the ambulance. They wouldn't let me in the ambulance. Then following the the, the, um, the ambulance through the lanes, through the country lanes, through witness taking yeah. so taking us to Wiston. Yeah, and that was it. it just took me straight to, to to everything. I just seen everything for the first time. I'd really gone back and like analysed what happened. That, that, that like I knew what had happened and I could I could say it, but I'd never actually. What what like it was like I re rewatched yeah. it and re relived it yeah. yeah and I just seen it from your eyes I was like seen HD it? and I just yeah I just remember because I lost obviously when they said oh we can't revive your dad in the in, in the hospital I just, I went mad yeah I started going crazy kicking things smashing yeah. things and just didn't know what to do and it was just yeah. weird it was just bizarre yeah. um watching it do you know what I mean I, from literally in the space of like thirty minutes I've been playing on the streets with my mate mm. outside plantation school so like. Looking at my dad lying there on, mm. on a hospital bed, so I was holding his feet, yeah. just thinking like, wait, wait, what's yeah, going come on? Come on, wake up! Yeah, yeah, what's going on? And I was just like, yeah, I don't think. I think he was dead at the at, at the actual leisure centre. Yeah. I think that's why they didn't let us in the ambulance, and they just like had to show to look like they were trying to revive him when yeah. he got there, and it was like, there's nothing he could do. Um, and then I let out. I was in the float, and I was just like, as, the more I was saying, "Who am I?" By the way. The stronger it was coming on, it was like it was telling me, it was like, all right, you want to know who you are? Here yeah. you go, fuck off. Yeah. Boomf, boom, boom, here you yeah. go, fuck off, dude. Man, this way more. I was like, <gasps> and I just let this emotion of like, because like, when your dad, when my dad died, it was since I was 13, 14, it's always been a brave face. Mm. Don't cry in front of your brothers, don't cry in front of your mum. Mm. I actually used to cry sometimes in the shower. Yeah. I, that's where I'd let out in the shower, I'd be like, yeah. And, but if I'd ever seen them, I wouldn't. Mm. So like that, I carried that with me. And it's only since I've had kids now that I've gone, oh, I don't want, I don't, I used to think that was something yeah. manly. To not cry. I used to think, no, I don't yeah. cry. And, that. and now I understand it's not, it's it's the complete opposite. Because yeah. it's a mantra we give young boys, especially, you know, you know, don't cry, yeah, you're a girl. And, and, and it's, man up. Yeah, man, man up, up all that. And, and it's these mantras which have the, this is why the, you know, the suicide rate, you know, mm. nowadays, especially with men, you know, hitting the, the, the mid 30s, the 40s, like, it's like nearly 90%, you know what I mean? And it's, and our, and our boys are raised completely different from girls, you know, and, and it's not okay to tap into your emotions and it's, yeah. it's, it's not, it's, you know, it's not okay to cry and all that kind of stuff. And I don't, yeah. want my, I don't want my kids to think I don't cry. Yeah. And they go, oh, my dad doesn't cry. Mm. I want them to know it's okay to cry. It's okay. Yeah, uh, it's, it's fine. Yeah. And I, 
that 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 I let out in my uh, the brilliant. It was yeah. like one of the best floats I've ever had. Yeah, wow. And after that, I was just like, I didn't touch my phone for two hours. I was yeah. in Manchester. I was just floating. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, that's just. And it was like a release. It's like mm. this release that builds up over like years, years. And I was like, wow. Yeah. And I was just like. Powerful. And that's the power in the tank, isn't that's it? And you know, I, I know from my understanding, you know, it's a sensory deprivation tank. You, you're in this pod, um, and it's it, it really just creates the conditions for you to feel empty. You yeah. know, for you to feel still, deeply relaxed, puts you back in the parasympathetic nervous system, and and you know, takes you into like a theta state of mind. You know, and that is the you know what we could call maybe the divine matrix or the you know, um, the gateway, I suppose, you know, being a meditation teacher and understanding brainwaves, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and, you know, if, you know, ask, even asking that question, who am I? You, you're very much like asking, who am I behind Leo and who am I behind the name, the personality, the form? And it's took you to an experience of, I suppose, just awareness, just this stillness awareness, you know, which is always there. And then, f but there's a, a, an element of integration or a, a healing process that's happened where, you know, the traumatic events in that time when your father passed away, you know, it's been stored up in your body. Mm. You know, it's been stored up in the psyche, in the body. And then for you to have that experience and then, I know, uh, you know, from my understanding of like shamanism and, and plant medicine is, uh, it, they call it soul retrieval. You know, some some elements of something that's been fragmented all them years ago was, was, was like reignited, you know, sort of, reinstalled and then to have that page you know to cry to to let it all out um it's and and, and that was probably that the moment then when you thought wow yeah. floating is like is next level that's right yeah, that's when like it really because my, my, i know it wasn't floating wasn't wasn't my dream mm. i never had any dreams to open a float center mm. and funnily enough if thomas wouldn't have come home i don't think i would have been anything to do with the float center mm. to be honest it was sort of it's all interlinked isn't it our man and michael's paths crossed it was through thomas being home and then meeting in coffee shops for, for lunch so he's just landed thomas's isn't he yeah i grew up with our thomas he's you have the same same birthday no is he the day after yeah day after or the day before mike mm. yeah, yeah. he's one of these like like they grew up together. So he's so. almost like a brother, isn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah, I've seen Mikey grow up on our estate, yeah. I've seen all, all about Mikey. Yeah. So it was just weird the way the, the, the way the way that happened. Because it was I, his idea, wasn't it? You know, it the was his idea. Therapy, he introduced what, 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 me to it. I was like, I was on the cusp of making starting my own kitchen company mm -hmm. and designing kitchens. I had friends who who who'd offered me a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And it just made the logical sense for me to, to, to go down that route. It was yeah. like an easy start, really. It was yeah. like, you know, start your kitchen business. There's X amount of jobs that'll get you on. And I was like, that's, this is an unbelievable start. Yeah, I'm in. And also, I was going to buy a house. Mm. And then come across Mikey's path. And then everything cut off. Everything just it's interlinked. Just, yeah. And it was just, I'd met Mikey funny. a couple of times. And it just happened. And then I even got the feeling before, I actually said to you, didn't I? There was even before Michael had asked me, I said, I've got a feeling he's gonna he wants me to yeah, he wants me in. to help and, yeah. and come in. I said it's a lot and I said, if you ask me, you know, I've, I've got this feeling I yeah, want to do this. Say, yeah. And then it's definitely asked, a two man job like, isn't it? You know, with the business, yeah, how you hold yeah. the space. Yeah, it's, it's more than two men. <laughs> 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 but um Yeah, and then he asked me that he asked me and then I went back to Lauren and I was like, listen, I was like, we've got money here for the kitchen company and to, to buy a house. I was like, but I, want, I, I really want to, like, I'm, I'm, it, was, it was there. Yeah. It was like this feeling it of like, right. I you couldn't explain it. it. Yeah. I was like, I just want to, I feel like this is something, that this is going to be something that doesn't know what. Thing, yeah. I didn't even really experience it, yeah. but it was just like, just knew. You just knew, you yeah. know what I mean? It was like, it's like choiceless, isn't it? It's, it's like, like, yeah, it was like, like something was guiding you. This something is where you're meant to go. And I knew, I sensed it before he even asked me. So I was like, everything I was picking up on was happening. And I, um, I just said to Lauren, I went home, I said to Lauren, I was like, listen, if we do this, I said, I need you, you've got to back me. Yeah, I need you. This, could, need you. this yeah. could fall flat on its face and I could be, I could be sitting here in five next year or two years and thinking, I should have yeah. started that kitchen company, yeah. I should have bought that house. And, mm. and you know, it's been tough. It hasn't been, it hasn't been plain sailing, do you yeah. know what I mean? It was, we, we took a lot of risk and yeah. not just me and Michael, separately for, as a family, yeah, uh, you know what I mean? For, 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 for Lauren a lot and the kids. Line. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so... So you had two kids at the time, and now you've got a third, third child. Yes. You know, so it's, there's a, there's a lot of responsibility. And mm. but what what I really honour here is that you just followed something which 
you can't put your finger on it. You know, the intellectual mind couldn't even reason with it. There was it was a it was an instinct, wasn't it? You know, it was an intuition that actually I'm being guided here. I'm, I, this just feels right to me. Mm. Um, and then fast forward to today, you know, you've, you've opened up a, a centre on Dale Street in Liverpool. You know, you've got three incredible pods there with a fourth on the way. Um, and, you know, you're open seven days a week. And, yeah, it's it, it's a business where, for me, it, it you're offering a service of healing. You know, you're offering a service to the public, which is which which is of a need, mm. you know. And uh, there wasn't any flotation tanks in, in Liverpool, was there? Um, no, not at the time we opened, no. I mean, we have... Before we opened at the Echo, I've done an article saying the first flotation centre in Liverpool. And then there's a few comments underneath it saying, oh, actually, 20 years ago, there was yeah. a, <laughs> there was a lane, full tank and laugh lane. And we were like, oh, so we, that wasn't our idea. That was the Echo put that in. Yeah. So it was like, we got a bit of uh, backlash off that. It's a, it's a lot different to our, our tanks, the state of the art tanks. Yeah. Um, a lot of the old tanks were like coffins and you could hear things outside happening. And yeah. Ours is complete sensory deprivation. Yeah. The walls are really thick. You know, you get your earplugs. I think the shop is just tailor made for silence when yeah. you're in that room. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it is the it is the first dedicated flotation centre in yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, lovely. And 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 you know, being in the float, I know it's that the water goes with the temperature of the skin, and it's got yeah. all kinds of minerals and salts it's got in half it. Half a ton of Epsom salt in yeah. each tank. Yeah, and that's, that's, a, that's a massive benefit on, float, on the body. Yeah, it's got it? magnesium in there as yeah. well. This and it creates really them conditions, doesn't it? Again, for for almost like just to give people an hour, you know what I mean. But it's a very direct method. It, it's very like similar to meditation for anyone who maybe doesn't meditate or hasn't got a, an active practice. This is it's like a, a like okay, go and have a float then instead. That you're gonna get the benefits to it. You like know, for, it like sort of forces the meditation yeah. floating. Yeah, it's like it takes like you're floating naked. Yeah. There's nothing there at hand. You can't see nothing through your eyelids. It's mm. black. It's like complete it's dark. dark. Nothing. Yeah. So like it's your first float's always strange yeah. for that reason because you're like, what am I Not doing? Not used to it. No one's used to doing nothing, and then you're you're floating in a tank on Dale Street naked, <laughs> thinking what, what what's, <laughs> what's going, going on. on here? <laughs> <laughs> so it does take a, a while to get used to, but it, it forces the meditation. If it, like after like twenty minutes of the analytical mind slowing down, it puts you into like. Yeah. It slows the brain waves down, especially yeah. if you've got the lights off. Mm. It just yeah, it, it forces that meditation on you. And and you know you you witness some people coming out the pods. There's there's a there's a natural afterglow. The pod does the work really, doesn't yeah. it? And you know you witness some people change, and you're often a great service. And I think as well with 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 the sense of itself. I, I'm guessing only maybe talking from my own experience here. You know owning up owning a, a yoga studio, is it the people that you're meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you, you, you're meeting so many different people from all walks of life who yeah. probably float all around the sit, the, con- the country, the world, and people coming to Liverpool for business meetings. And yeah. You know, so, yeah, like, I, I suppose that's a really nourishing part of the, of the work that the, the, the people you're meeting, really. Yeah, that definitely wasn't a factor that I even thought about mm. when I was opening it, but like the people that we've met, like, even the story behind the fourth tank yeah. is like, you wouldn't believe it. Mm. It's like, it's crazy to know how things happen. So yeah. it's like, it's yeah, it's just, and they're all from. It's it, they are all from different walks of life as well. Like you'd think, some people say like, "Who's your crowd? Like who comes? Is it all the yogis, meditators?" And it's like, yeah, it is, it is them. But it's like it's also there's a lot of young yeah. people and there's a lot of older people who don't do any of that. Yeah, but they're just coming because they're, they're searching and they're looking for something. Yeah. And a lot of this as well is is like now there's a lot of information out there about the pharmaceutical companies and and, and the, the medication. Mm. And everyone's starting to start. Oh, hang on a minute, there's something not right about this. Yeah, you know we. <laughs> We are the product here. Yeah. In, in this system, <laughs> like Absolutely. people, people are coming back to themselves. Yeah. It's like some people, some people have have, have actually said, "Oh, flo- like floating is like an escape. Yeah. It's like an escape, isn't it?" And I'm like, "Nah, no, it's not. It's not an escape. It's the, it's the way back." Yeah, of course. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's not. It's not an escape. Way back to a, the a way naturalness, back. isn't yeah, it? This, the way uh, back. this essential radiance that is yeah. always there, and you know, I know what you're talking about here. There's a level of like, we are our own medicine really, isn't it? And yeah. floating is a very holistic approach. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot more people nowadays that, you know, they are looking at different approaches, aren't they? When they're not so well and, and you know, because the world isn't well and there's a lot of disease going on. And really, you know, to a degree, when we're maybe referencing the likes of Greg Braden and jo- Dr. Joe Dispenza here, who are, who are like, massive noises you know in in the world of spirituality and um and and science is that you are the medicine 
you know, you are the medicine and, and, and the body actually knows what to do. And when we settle ourselves down and when we just create a, a simple space for us to relax, you know, to go back to this naturalness, to feel this radiance, then the healing process occurs, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and, and I know that's what's really happening in, in the flotation tank. I mean, people are coming in just to see what it's all about and being a bit nosy, I suppose. You know, that's the nature of what people are like. And then all of a sudden, they float once or twice and it's like, wow. Because yeah. you can't deny the better. You can't deny the feeling that you get from yeah, it. Yeah. You know, and I, for one, have floated, you know, a number of times. You know, I, I, um, I haven't floated for a, uh, about six weeks, but I was in probably every week, mm. you know, once a week. And it's it's a massive part of a self-care program. So if we're going to talk about a self-care program. It's, a, it's an opportunity for someone to really you know cultivate care for mm -hmm. themselves um you know i think it's an awesome business and um you know again the people that you're meeting and and, and for the for the periods you know you, you're both creating a service to the world which is inspiring you know and and when we really feel into that service to others and um, personally i feel like that's that, that is the ultimate service you know and mm -hmm. but but also in line with the things that you value you know you do and you it's not like it's, i suppose it's not like going to work is it for the periods you know mm -hmm. you're actually doing something that you love to do you know you're on purpose life's got an incredible amount of meaning and uh and so we can we, you know suppose we, we we could call this the flow state mm -hmm. you, know, you get up you're just going to work you're doing what you love to do and in the process of that a lot of people are benefiting from all walks of life, you know what I mean? Um, and you're know, becoming a father, you know, you've got three kids now, Lee, you know what I mean? Any more kids on the way or? No. <laughs> Bad enough? Yeah. I would, I've, I've always said that I'd love loads of kids. Um, but three, I didn't realise how hard three was. Yeah. <laughs> I think Lauren's had enough, maybe. Well, Lauren's just... definitely had enough, yeah. But, no, you know what? It's, I always had that. I don't know why. I don't even know why. I think it's because my, my dad was from a big family. There was 12 mm. of them. And I used to love Christmas, and you go round to me nan and granddad's Christmas, and it was just chocolate, and you, you, just, you get spoiled. And I was, the, I was actually the eldest grandchild on that side. Yeah, you come home with a big, big wad of cash, you know, on Christmas. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> you know, that feeling that you had though as well, that like yeah. a family together. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you're together, there's nothing. A tight dynamic. There's nothing better. And I think I always wanted. Uh, I don't know whether it was just because because my mum and dad did, and I just used to see it. And now I've got three kids, like my mum and dad had three kids, yeah. or but I always wanted all the kids. Yeah, yeah, but. I, I, but it's the space, isn't it? You need a yeah, big space. Absolutely. You need a lot of money. Yeah. You know, you don't need a lot of money, but I mean, I mean, it helps, doesn't it? Helps, it? You know what yeah. I mean? You know, you know, you especially nowadays, you, you know, you do want your kids. You know, you that first primal nature for us to have. You know, have a good house, have a safe environment yeah. for the kids to grow up in, in, and to be nourished and to be educated in in the right way. Yeah. And you know, you know yourself when you've got that container of family. You know, you guys having, um, you know, your youngest brother, that dynamic. There's an element that you it's a go, it's a safe default, isn't it? It's a go to place. I've got my team here, and then obviously, you know, you, you have your extended family with your friends and the people you're hanging around with, and all that kind of stuff. We are um, really lucky, we are really lucky though. Like, that is like sometimes I, I forget about that, but I think one of the major factors for me, anyway, is having Thomas and Michael, mm. and we all read the same similar stuff, yeah, we're all the talking journey. the same talk, we mm. all there's something. There's accountability, yeah. an element of accountability there as well. Lovely. Like it's even like when we're all in, when we all when one of us goes to the gym, we all seem to be in the gym. Yeah. And when one of us arms, it's like we, it's like this weird connection. It's yeah. like it's like it, it it helps massively. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it is. It's like it's I don't even know what to call it, but yeah, I think I've I've got like friends who who I know are seeking to be around. You know, better people yeah. and. Um, so for, for typically or, or generally speaking people would probably have to go and join masterminds mm. would probably have to go and you know maybe go to a course to try and meet people mm. or move cities or countries a lot of times just mm. to get around some good people whereas like for us it's just it was yeah. uh, we're all it's there, really it? close yeah. it's right there yeah, yeah. so I think like looking looking at that for accountability and that is like yeah just like I think, for, and I know for a fact that a lot of people would benefit from having the, yeah. the environment and the mastermind yeah, that like you guys got, have got, yeah. and and it and it shows, and and it's it, it, you know I for one, I'm, I'm a, I feel like uh, I'm a part of that container. Do you know what I mean? I love seeing you, I love hanging out, and we, you know, I know you and I Lee, have spent incredible times together. You know, on the dance floor, off the dance floor, and <laughs> um, you know, had many laughs. You know, and and and, uh, and there's actually always been this really deep respect between one another. You know what I mean? And and I I I I, I want for you know I am for one 
for for holding that close to me because you know people come and go don't they you know what yeah. I mean and actually we, we're still here we're still together and you know we're still moving forward and, and I want to bless you and your life you know what I mean Thank and you. everything you know and your kids um so if people want to get hold of you Lee you know what, what's the situation there that, like you're on Instagram you're on Facebook you know what, what's the situation today, with, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've got an Instagram account. I'm not active. Yeah. I'm not like I'm not. I'm on it. Um, no, Flow Planet's got an Instagram account. Hasn't Flow it? Planet's yeah. got Instagram. Yeah. yeah. We've got Facebook and, and stuff like that. So you know, we've got an email addresses in there. So I mean, I'm, I'm pretty easy to get hold of. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm not off the radar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I'm, I'm with Instagram. What is it? Is it Flow Planet Liverpool? Is it? Or... Yeah. Fl- float underscore Planet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd, we'd certainly recommend anyone to go and dive into into the centre because it's a really friendly environment as well and you come in you know you guys are up for you know having a cup of tea um, and having a chat with anyone and you make people feel incredibly welcome and the centre is actually pristine as well it's a lovely yeah. centre mm-hmm. so you know I invite everyone you know who's listening maybe today to, to get down to Dale Street go, go and have a float go and check what it's all about and give it a good shot you know what I mean and, and maybe just very quickly tapping into anyone who is struggling and, and looking for a container and looking for a community then you know get down to Planet Yoga um, you know, we, we, there's there's a massive container here. That there's a there's a community of people who are who are coming together, and and um, and that's it's actually one of our strap lines. It's Planet Yoga coming together, bringing people together. So you know, if you feel like you are a bit lost and you're looking for something, um, that there's a a lot of amazing things happening in and around the city nowadays. Um, and you just got to say yes. You just got to step up and and ask yourself. Not necessarily what's the worst that can happen, but what's the best that can happen? You know what I mean? What's the best thing that can happen today by by saying yes, by 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 diving into something new and meeting new people? There's something really beautiful about meeting new people, isn't there, and making new friends? And I know that's a quality that you both hold as well. So finishing off, Tom, anything else you'd like to share? or uh, Encouraging people to come and explore yourself yeah. and Planet Yoga. I mean, decided to get into my routine now every Friday, and I think... Um, at the start, because it wasn't anything sort of now, I didn't grow up around people meditating or mm. grow up around people talking about spirituality or anything like that. But um, just to like, you know, personal development and spiritualities in that, as say, I feel like saved my life. Mm. Um, so a um, big part of my personal development's been yourself, Planet Yoga. Um, so I'd encourage people to try it and. and you know, even Friday's class, mm. we're doing some of the Kundalini stuff. I don't yeah, know how you'd just, explain that. Yeah, just embodiment, getting yeah, into the body. Like, really uncomfortable for me. Yeah. But I haven't stopped thinking about it yeah. since. Because I'm like, is, yeah. Yeah, and, and as I was doing it, I could just feel my ego like yeah. piping up as if to say, like, ah, oh, someone, mate, don't, don't, don't go too loud yeah. in case yeah. someone is. You know, <laughs> make sure you're in rhythm here. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, but, but, but for me, just stepping into that. Un- Oh, outside of that comfort zone has saved me beyond words. Like, mm. I can't explain how much me being uncomfortable and um, going outside my comfort zone and taking risk um, has saved me in my life yeah. a lot. So I, I wish that upon everyone else's yeah, life I and I hope they come to Planet Yoga. I'm, I'm being, a, I'm being a, a football coach, you know, plugging your own business, you know, from the age range of, of what? Like, six, yeah, yeah, under six. So any player under six all the way up to... Um, professional yeah Premier League yeah, yeah. and how can people get hold of you is it Tom Owens UK Tom Owens UK everything yeah, yeah. all the handles Tom Owens UK yeah, wherever you are we are I think yeah lovely they've been doing a good job I like it yeah um, awesome so listen that was it it's been awesome having you here you know what I mean what a great conversation That's I think we just we probably could have spoke a lot more about so many other other things but I felt like what we spoke about today has been incredibly inspiring you know educating people on what it means to step up and what it means to have a container of people around you you know and and and, and to feel into yourself you know what I mean and um, I for one have really enjoyed this conversation and I, and I wish you well you know in the future Thanks, lads. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Creating Space is sponsored by the Scouse Guru app, an all-purpose meditation app that feeds into all your needs, developing peace of mind, increasing mental focus, lowering stress levels while discovering inner stillness, awakening your potential and educating you on all matters related to human behaviour and personal development. Download the app for free on the App Store or get it on Google Play today.